Welcome back to Sunless Skies. Before I continue, I just want to talk about a couple things that people in the comments brought to my attention. First thing is that Rubbery Men were in Sunless Sea, actually. Uh, if you don't remember, we encountered a Rubbery Man at Kurillin. They were trying to repent. I think they were involved in some sort of weird chess game or something. And we helped them out. And I wasn't sure what they actually were like why are they rubbery how are they rubbery and i didn't remember that they were in sunless sea but uh yeah they are they resemble squids kind of like squid people they're very rubbery the other thing is that titania this place up here i thought that the name well i didn't really think about it really in particular i just kind of assumed the name was in reference to some plant probably or Something related to Titan, Titan, Titania, something like that. Like the metal or like something big or something strong or something like that. But no, actually, it's a reference to Titania, which is a character in William Shakespeare's play, A Midsummer's Night, A Midsummer Night's Dream. She is the queen of the fairies. Right. First thing I want to do is head over to Carillon because I have a prospect to deliver nectar to them. Unfortunately, they want five nectar, and I only have four. Yeah, I just had four in my bank. I just assumed I had more, but apparently not. It's very unsatisfying to deliver four instead of five, but it's not that big of a deal, and, like, the only way I can reliably get more nectar is by going to the nature reserve, since they are the only ones right now that export it that I have on my map. And that is very out of the way from Kirillin. It's It's so not worth it to go there just for one honey. There's a decent chance they'll find like a, a deal or something, or maybe even they'll maybe they'll sell nectar at Kirillin again, like they did last time. Remember when I bought the deal that then fulfilled the prospect at that very place? Like running across the street and just selling them something I just bought ten seconds ago for like twice the price? Maybe that'll happen again. Uh yeah, so let's head over to Kirillin. Um I have two orders of business there. It's not just the prospect thing, but also the rat brigade. I have a quest to take them to Kirillin. That's like the last clue that they got about what to do about that. Um, they're trying to get inside of like a vault or a bank or something like that. I think that their sergeant left them or, or something of the sort. Um, yeah, I want to go help them out because I am really, really interested in helping out the Rat Brigade because they're super cool. So two things I want to do there, and they don't sell fuel at Kirillin. So I'm going to buy a lot of fuel. Already did. Got five of it. And I'm just going to leave my supplies pretty low, because I can always buy that once I get there. Because after I go to Kirillin, I plan on going north and trying to find the... Is it Lumia? No, Lustrum. The Lustrum Mines, which should be somewhere around here. But first, Kirillin. Figured I would take a tiny detour, and instead of going this way to Kirillin, go down so we can pass the memorial to the unknown rat. Thought the rat brigade might appreciate that. And then also go through this little unexplored area. Maybe there's something there. I think this will reduce my terror as well. Yes, not that I needed it. Those brave Rattus Faber who gave their lives in their early exodus to heaven. Isn't that what the Rat Brigade fought in as well? They fought in some war. I think it was the Winchester War, right? Looks like there's nothing here. God, this game is gorgeous. Snow whips your locomotive. Your stokers work double shifts at the boiler. Ah, oh, right. I forgot that around Carillon it's all snowy. Just got a port report at Carillon? See, do they happen? No, they don't. They don't have a bargain for gourds of Corister nectar. That's fair. Jesus Christ, I feel rich. Thirty-five hundred. Thirty-five hundred. Guess I might as well. No. Wait, why does that say I have nine, but in reality I have five? 
Probably not taking into account that I just sold these. Let's go here and then here. Now is it updated? Yeah. Yeah, I'll buy all these. Oh, wait a minute. They actually just sell Gourds of Chorister Nectar. It's not a particular deal, but I, I would still get more money for it. Um, in the prospect. Okay. <laughs> that, that is so weird. Right, otherworldly artifact, 150 experience. Right, this is to, the nectar is to make sure that the penitent's vocal cords don't go before they can finish screaming or something. Okay, there's something else odd here that I saw when I was just poking around. Observe the casting out of the Spearifer. I 100% did this as well. So this has shown up twice now, and also the thing to go to Port Avon and check out the Tackities that have been spotted in the area, that also showed up twice. I think it might be from the game not saving as frequently as it should. Because I tend to go to a port, do a bunch of stuff at the port, and then end the episode. And I think it's not necessarily saving everything that I do before I leave. I don't know how the save system works. It never says saving. It, you know, when you go to exit, it doesn't say like save and quit or anything like that. So I have, there's absolutely zero transparency on how and when it's saving. So I don't really like that. It's a little bit awkward. I've recently started to make sure that before I end the episode, if I'm at a port, that I always undock and then redock. Hoping that that will trigger a save, but Again, I have no idea if it is saving. Anyway, I guess we'll check out this beer first casting out again. Maybe there's some rewards. Ten Savage Secrets. Yep, I was missing that. Uh, let's ask about Sarge's stuff for the Rat Brigade. You are directed to the presiding Deviless. Her record keeping is immaculate. If Sarge left something behind, she'll have made note. She glances up when you enter her office. On noticing the Rat Brigade, her eyebrow rises a fraction. We've never satisfactorily answered the question of rodent souls. How can I help you? She addresses you and ignores the rats. Rude. It transpires that the Devil S is able to locate Sarge's file remarkably swiftly. She does not hand over the slim folder, but reads it in silence. There, I knew he'd specified something that those who came looking for that which he entrusted to us must first undergo penance. To avoid a repetition of his mistakes, it will require a shift in perspective. That can be gained in the checkerboard garden. Okay, that should be easy enough. Checkerboard garden is, I think, where we encountered the rubbery man. Let's go there real quick. 87% chance of success. Let's take the Rat Brigade back to the presiding Deviless. You have been cleansed of Sarge's sin. The Rat Brigade look almost contrite. The presiding Deviless smiles at the unhappy expression of the rats. Much better. She passes over a single piece of paper from the Sarge's file. It smells of incense and jasmine. Hookah. Cinders explains. Sarge did like his luxuries. The writing is minuscule and brief. The vault is at the central office of Hallage's Bank. The account was opened in London in the year before the blockade of New Winchester. The Deviless is already working on a new file. You have apparently been dismissed. Okay, so next thing, or next place we gotta go is probably London. But looks like right now I also need to talk with the Rat Brigade. They know the location of Sarge's vault. They don't seem to want to leave your locomotive. They need the numbers to the account. Where do they think they'll find them? The air is thick with the scent of jasmine. The rats have acquired a hookah pipe and are reminiscing over their lost Sarge. Albrecht twitches his immaculate whiskers. We need to find Wilma, our strategist. But it will be awkward. She was Cinder's paramour. There's a snort from somewhere in the nest. Albrecht continues. We lost touch with the others, but Wilma will know where they are. And when we open the vault, you will have a share, of course. 
The last I heard, Wilma was residing at Perturance as a pet. Albrecht's expression speaks volumes. I see, so being a pet for these obviously very intelligent rats is probably... Sounds like a very kind of demeaning thing. Travel to Perturance to find Wilma. Where is Perturance? Is that even here? In the Reach? Don't know, but that's going to have to wait. Oh, there's some more. Ask Petronella, Petronella to continue Sarge's tale. Petronella takes up the thread, frowning over her glasses. So we had a new boss, the lieutenant. Now he wanted the admiration of command, but the Tackities and the Stovies didn't trust us because we were we was mercs. Just rats, right? We did eventually get a lucrative contract from the Tackities to sabotage the governor's engine to stop her fleeing New Winchester. Risky. Who else had the know-how to get it done, right? Her question is rhetorical. Her smile is proud. She pauses. More some other time, I think. Well, I'm glad to hear that they helped out the Tackities. Of course, they were mercenaries, so I'm sure they would have taken any deal that was given to them, but... You know. This seems to be new. An overgrown shrine. The path leads you to a broken statue, seemingly ignored by the devils of Karillan, except for whoever placed the freshly lit candles at its feet. The face is poorly carved, but its features unmistakable. The burrower below stares at you through one gemstone eye and an empty socket. Contemplate it or steal an offering? No. No, to hell no. Let's contemplate the statue. A terrifying visage, but with something comforting to offer, too. While the statue is the raw material of nightmares, there's something soothing about the idea that even a beast like this might be harnessed. That there's a chance of such an ally for those who crack the code of offerings and prayer. Whether it is actually listening, it is impossible to tell. The thought that it even might, however, is something to hold on to in the dark. The statue's the raw material of nightmares, but it just reduced our terror down to zero. I'll take it. So, I think there's one or two other people that we can help with their penance. I remember I had to leave because there were... You know, I had to get certain types of penance that required me to use skills that I'm really bad at and really low chances of success, so I kept trying them and my terror ended up super, super high. But my terror is zero, so this is perfect. Hello? Why oh, did I have to click it three times? Gaslight Terrace we've done. The Bell Garden we've done. Checkerboard Garden we've done. I think it's these last two. Let's check out the Stunted Grove. I know we've been to everyone. Professional Penitent. Oh, right! The one eating vast quantities of sorbet. I've already spoken with them. What do they need? Five Ordeal. Um... Ordeal is something I'm bad at. I think that's heart. One ordeal. And dependence of deprivation, which I already have. So just one ordeal. Oh, it's iron. 22%. Fail. <laughs> a muscular woman considers cats a nuisance. Consequently, she is being menaced by kittens. <laughs> Oh, how horrible. Oh, the humanity. Oh, whoops. Failure. A fast-talking debutante kicks puppies and small children. Jesus. As a corrective, she's being forced to copy out the obituaries of departed wives and beloved husbands. Failure again. A gentleman substitutes in scandalous words whenever reading poetry. To cure these defects of characters, he's been tied to one of the trees in the grove. Oh my god, come on. A lady admires the line of a good horse only when it's on the way to the glue factory. As punishment, she is bound face down to a huge block of ice. <laughs> Remember the person whose penance was to, like, cut off their arm or something? What the fuck was that about? Failure again? 
A lady broke an engagement out of boredom. <laughs> As punishment, she's being forced to copy out the obituaries. Oh, that one again. Broken engagement out of boredom. I, th I think when it says broken engagement out of boredom, it means like uh, an engagement like, I don't know, let's meet for lunch. And they broke it because they were didn't want to do it. Or like they left halfway through. That's probably what it means. But I'd like to believe that this engagement is like they were engaged to be, to be married to somebody. And they were just bored, so they broke it off. Jesus Christ, come on. 30%. A handsome man laughs darkly when complimented. Also bound to a huge block of ice. Ah, oh, finally. An elderly bachelor never gives gifts. As punishment, he's being prodded with pitchforks, though the devils involved look a bit worn out. The supervising devilless makes notes. Uh... Yeah, it's donated the ordeal and deprivation to the professional penitent. She likely has a use for these for her current customer or for a future one. She accepts both penances gratefully. Let me pay you, she says. Deprivations are not my favorite. I still do them, of course. There's nothing I won't live through for a client. But the fasting gets dull. So nice to be able to stock this without having to do it myself. 500 experience, a savage secret... Okay, one more. Garden of Insatiable Roses. Ah, right, you need a stained soul to be admitted, which I have. This one, this one uses hearts, right? Probably. Oh, wait. Right, this one's a little bit different. Uh, overgrown... Path. I could either explore the undergrowth as you go, read the footprints, or identify that scent. Mm, let's identify that scent. It lingers in the air, mingled with the rose scent and the smoke. Wood from the back of a wardrobe. Folded newspaper. Musty correspondence. The smell of a mother's hidden keepsake drawer opened by a child. Those are very specific scents. Yeah, oh my god, my chance at hearts is 10%. Oh, that's so bad. Uh, that means I'm likely, on average, to gain 50 terror for every success. That is what that means, right? I'll succeed one at a... Uh, no, that's not quite right. 9, 45, so I'm likely to gain 45 terror for every one success. The Hellish Penitent... Have I spoken with them? No, I don't think I have. At the center of the garden is a picnic banquet. There's too much frosting on all of the cakes, too much oil in the salads, but several of the penitents sit glumly eating, with only their own clothes for napkins. The deviless sits among them, eating treacle from a jar. Let's ask what she's doing here. Supposedly, says the deviless between bites, the souls of devils are incapable of being refined. You make some adjustments, improve here and there, and then a death or two later and all the work is gone. But I'm determined. If humans can be improved, so can I. How interesting, a penitent deviless. So what do you need? Either five, right, same as five of this, or... Oh wait, no. No, this is different. Interesting. Okay. I need either five inescapable truths or five endurance. Are those the ones that I can't access? Let's go back out to the main menu. An inescapable truth, endurance. Inescapable truth, endurance. Deprivation, enlightenment, shift perspective, ordeal, excess. Yeah, these require... I need to be clear for this one. And I need flickering for this one. How do I get a clear soul, exactly? I assume clear soul is what you get when you don't have a stained soul. Right? Which means if I have to get rid of stained to become clear, that would allow me to get the stuff to go back to finish the Garden of Insatiable Roses, but at that point I won't be stained, so I won't be able to enter. 
so I gotta like flip flop between the two. Sounds like a sort of a long term thing. Yeah, I don't know how to get stained or unstained exactly. You think doing all these penances would do something, but they don't seem to affect the staining of my soul. Ah, uh, it looks like I might be able to change my my soul by speaking with the presiding deviless and giving them a bunch of jumbles of undistinguished souls. This requires one, this requires three. Uh, this purchase and indulgence, all the other types of penance are slower and more difficult. I'm not entirely sure what that does. And then I can also buy them in bulk. The other routes to repairing a soul require so much effort. I'm not exactly sure if that's going to affect my soul. Like, buying an indulgence, would that clear my soul? It doesn't sound like it. But that's the only thing I can think of to do. Anyway, I don't have any of these jumbles of souls on me, and they don't sell them here, so that's going to have to wait. I think we're done here. Yeah. It's time to look for Lustrum. It should be somewhere around here. It's supposed to be west-northwest. So yeah, like this area. I just bought as many supplies as I can, so I've got a totally full hold, fuel supplies, and then the, the three bargain unseasoned hours. Let's go. I love exploring totally new areas. It's so exciting. And it is completely unexplored out here. God, there's so much of the reach unexplored. <laughs> I've got like half of the reach done, and there's Eleutheria, and there's the Blue Kingdom, and there's Alpion. I think they found that over there. I'm not going that way. Actually, I might be. This is all a dead end. I think I might have to go back out there to go up here. Yeah, this is a total dead end, and it's definitely not below. Kirillin, so... Yeah, let's actually slip back around here to the question mark and see if we can find a way west around here. The sky closes its cold jaws about you. Water freezes in the pipes. Engineers scurry to and fro with boiling kettles. Something to mine? No, just general loot. Is the Marauder gonna pop out? No, thank god. Has nothing to report. And look at these abandoned signs of of, like, somebody used to live here, this used to be a thing. Like, look down here, this layer below us, there's, like, steps. Mostly covered in rock and snow and totally abandoned, obviously. Like, what used to be here? It's so interesting. Oh yeah, there's some steps there, too. Anyway, uh, yeah, looks like this is gonna allow us to go west. Ooh. It's a pretty big structure. Does that have a name? Oh. Was that a tackity? Yeah, all the way out here. Yeah, it looks like there were a bunch of temples around here or something. That's what they feel like to me, anyway. Look at some more steps way, way, way down there. Whoa. What is that? Desolation of Saliba. Broken stonework drifts by, impossible in its intricacies. Oh, I need to say this, dang. Oh, I missed reading that one, too. Oh, God. Okay, they made a bird sound. Sh 
should I... Oh, there's a horror over there. <laughs> uh, and that's like right about where Lustrum, the Lustrum Mine should be. Damn. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try to take that thing out. Old runes are locked in the ice. Their staircases leading nowhere. I had a friend climbed one of them stairs, an engineer claims. Didn't come down again, though. That was a messy fight. Hurt my hole a lot, but I'm not doing too bad. Scribe Spinster defeated. Recover sheaves of parchment or send out crewmen with axes. Uh, they were wrought from bronze wood. Okay, so that'd give me bronze wood, and this would give me experience. Let's get experience. Ooh. Your crew lean from the outer hatches with boat hooks and nets, swiping at the fluttering pages like a class of frenzied lepidopterists. <laughs> Soon you have accumulated a small pile of parchment, dense with pictographic script. You carry it to your cabin. What secrets might it hold? Lepidopterists. Ah, yeah, lepidopterist is someone who studies moths and the three superfamilies of butterflies, according to Wikipedia. Oh, there's a really good one here that I'm going to go with. A thief oath. They say there is no honor among thieves. They're wrong. You unlock this by having affiliation, villainy at two or more. In a lightless cellar, you and your closest collaborators spoke a solemn promise that was invented in the dark. You mingled your blood. What did you swear? And this also reduces our nightmares. So... I'm going to go with an Oath of Solace to shelter and safeguard one another, however dire the circumstances, to forgive each other all debts, to name the foe of one of you as the foe of you all. I'm going to go with this, and this collaborator that we made this oath with, one of our closest friends, is the earnest agitator, I'm going to say. Yeah, they're the person who told us the stars are dying. It's a very interesting one. I like that. I've been trying to focus on mirrors and veils, but it probably is a good idea to get my iron and hearts up a little bit more, because, man, they're low. Especially hearts. Should I go towards the horror? I mean... Lustrum is probably somewhere back there, so... Sure. My dare is at 48, 48% too, which is really quite bad. Oh boy. Oh, I bet this place just has a lot of these things. Broken stonework drifts by, impossible in its intricacies. I'm already close enough to the horror to have my terror go up. Uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that the things you encounter are probably themed to the area that you're in. Because this is a place full of all sorts of like broken old... Stonework. Strange, mysterious stonework. So it 
feels like it makes sense that there'd be kind of magical things to assay here. Okay, let's go towards the horror. Some more of those symbols? Why are those symbols so closely associated with horrors? What do they mean? 